Let's start with the easiest part, the water in the background. I use cerulean blue and a hooker's green light. Yes, that is the name of the paint. Uh, anyways, uh, for this entire area, I make sure to keep enough water on the paper to allow for all the colors to flow. The colors at the top of the pond are mixed with titanium white. And as I move down, I add more green and ultramarine ultra blue to darken the water and to add depth. On to the greenery. Considering that nature has a variety of colors, I make sure that I change up the tones in my greens, mostly to give a sense of randomness, which is why I bounce around. You can see with each leaf or stem, I have highlights and shadows. While the areas are wet, I add more little dabs of color in certain spots to, get, to give it that effect. If you have played around with watercolor before, you know you have to allow areas to dry before you can work on adding more color. This is where I make my mistakes. Sometimes I get impatient and I keep painting on a wet area so you can see the colors keep bleeding into themselves. I guess that's the acrylic painter's mindset I have. So my lotus flower starts to lose its definition. I need to let it dry. So I move on to the lily pad the frog is sitting on. Now too much green is getting boring. But I did some research and I found that lily pads come in different colors. So mauve it is. For the body of the frog, I treated it the same way I did the water, from light to dark, with enough water on the paper to allow for smooth gradients. There are bits of hooker green, titanium white, and cadmium yellow deep. I want the frog to be more realistic, so an array of greens is ideal. Although this image is a bit fanciful, I still want some light source consistency, which is why the frog's legs will have a bit of darker green on them. The deepest part of the shadow will be at the ankle, and the length of the foot will be a bit more highlighted. Again, to allow for a smoother gradient between colors, I like to add those dabs of dark while the area is still very wet. On the top of the pond are a bunch of rocks. To make this more colorful, I don't have only gray rocks. There are hints of steel blue, plum, even a burnt orange. This will help tie in the colors of the lilies, the lotus flowers, and the little toes on the frog and its tongue. I, this is a bit out of order, but here is where I'm removing the liquid frisk. Yeah, it's really satisfying to do. Often with paintings, you will go back to areas to add more shadows or maybe even a few color adjustments. With watercolor, you will have to go through and fill in some of the spaces where white should not be showing.
You're probably wondering what is going on with the frog's back. Well, I had the idea of the frog being transparent. So you can see the eggs inside of it. And then you see the tadpoles emerging and going through the stages of development. That's why there are tiny little frogs on the rocks. And really the tadpoles don't have a lot of detail to them because of their size. Speaking of detail, I wanted the frog's skin to look more wet. So along with white shines, I'm adding little dots to act like shimmer on the skin's pores. The next several steps will be me adding outlines with darker colors and some light highlights. Here is a close-up of adding white uh, to the lotus to help define the petals. Dark peak lines will come later. Oh, and the colors for the lotus, I used Alizarian Crimson and Cadmium Red Lights, which is the orange. Apparently my orange wants to be red, but either way. Both are mixed with titanium white to give it a lighter tint. I'm adding textures to the rock by adding little white dots and dabbing them with my finger. It allows for a more porous surface. There's a lot of outlining for this image, which is the look I wanted. It gives off an illustrated quality to it. It does take a steady hand, which you can develop with a lot of practice. Even with a ton of practice, you can see I still goof up in a few spots, but I know how to hide it with improvised lines or simply thickening some lines making it look kind of like calligraphy. Ah, now here comes the metallic paint. I will show you two shots of me painting the eye. That way you can see how the pigment looks when it captures the light. In this shot, you can see how my outlining is not just black. I use a variety of shades and tints to match the lighter parts of the frog and darker outlines for the deepest shadows. It keeps the image from becoming too flat, even with all that outlining. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let me know your thoughts on it. Suggestions are always welcome. Social media stuff and ways to support me are in the description uh, so you can check that out and thank you.